right and good. Everything that is, is right and good. Forgive me for being the old professor again, but how can anyone believe that everything is right and good when there is every indication of evil on all sides? Quite apart from natural disasters or horrifying accidents, there seems to be far too much deliberate evil on the part of us human beings for anyone to believe that this could be the best of all possible worlds. The particular evil which impelled Lillian Hellman to choose Candide and present it to me as the basis for a musical stage work was what we now quaintly and alas faintly recall as McCarthyism, an ism so akin to that Spanish inquisition we just revisited in the first act is to curdle the blood. This was a period in the early 50s of our own century, exactly 200 years after the Lisbon affair, when everything that America stood for seemed to be on the verge of being ground under the heel of that junior senator from Wisconsin, Joseph McCarthy, and his inquisitorial henchmen. That was the time of the Hollywood blacklist. Of course, you're all too young to remember this, but <laughs> there was the Hollywood blacklist, television censorship, lost jobs, suicides, expatriation, and the denial of passports to anyone even suspected of having once known a suspected communist. I can vouch for this. I was denied a passport by my own government. By the way, so was Voltaire denied a passport by his. His answer was satire, ridicule, and through laughter to provoke in his reader self-recognition and, of course, self-justification. Who, me, not me. Which produces discussion, makes debate, and debate is, after all, the cornerstone of democracy. So Lillian and I were naturally magnetized by Voltaire's mordant wit and wisdom, and quickly set about our work with a young whiz lyricist called John Latouche, who wrote the second of the two syphilis songs you heard in Act One. The other syphilis song you heard, equally inspired, if somewhat more literary, was written by our second great lyricist, Richard Wilbur, who was until recently Poet Laureate of the United States. There are, these are only two of perhaps dozens of people who have contributed in one way or another to the highly checkered career of this work. To mention but a few, Hal Prince, Stephen Sondheim, Maestro John Mauceri, Dr. Jonathan Miller. But enough about me. Now let our <laughs> Pangloss, with accents mild, take up the tale. 